At first I was looking for backing and support, but I never got it. That's been a strength because I don't have people telling me what to do. Over the course of five decades, the girl-born Vivian Isabel Swire has gone from punk provocateur to Britain's best-loved fashion designer. Raised in the DIY climate of post-war Derbyshire, it was 1970s London where she opened the King's Road Boutique that launched her name. And along with co-conspirator Malcolm McLaren, gave birth to Britain's most defining youth movement, punk. In the years that followed, from Pirates to Minnie Crinny, Harris Tweed to the present day, she plundered history, pioneering the idea that fashion could be about more than just clothes. It could be about protest too. Join me as I meet the incendiary Grand Dame behind the name and discover more about a bona fide ID icon, Vivian Westwood. In the late 1950s, mm -hmm. at that time when youth culture was really coming into the fore, how aware were you of that? Well, when, when um, I was 13, 14, you had this rock around the clock with Bill Haley and all these teddy boys, that were, there were some in my village, we were, there's, there's a Ted, they looked great. And, um, you know, they were overturning buses and ripping seats out, and we wanted some of it. Were these when the first seeds for Let It Rock were beginning to be sowed, those ideas of... of no, the... no, it was all about, you know, getting a pencil skirt and all this stuff, these tight things, little velvet bopping shoes, high heels. Um, it's the most incredible time because it coincided completely with me being a kid turning into a, a woman. You know, that's how I was, you were seeing yourself. You were the most desired things on the planet at age 14 and 15. And there we were with, you know, making clothes. I started even then. And um, we, we, yeah, we were, we were the, what, where it was at. And so the first time around, that was rock and roll. I was there. And then when I met Malcolm later on, he was four years younger than me. So um, at a certain point, he wanted to rework the 50s. So I was, you know, I knew what to do. In October 71, Vivian and her art student boyfriend, Malcolm McLaren, took over the retail space at 430 Kings Road. And she began deconstructing the clothing of her teenage years into the look that would launch a thousand safety pins. Adding straps and bondage and stuff, that was a sort of customising. Well, that was customising. We were just experimenting. I suppose there were those ideas of that kind of situationist thinking, that idea that mm. art and protest could be on the streets and, and through, through your clothing. The situationists, when you really heard about them most was around 1968. Of course, it had been around in the 50s, Bohemians and this kind of idea. And it really was that stupid lyrics of we don't want no education. Pink Floyd, uh, Pink Floyd yeah. Um, I, I, I mean, I like the tune. But, and, and, the, and the way they sang it and deal with it, that's really, uh, I mean, it's, it's really good, but the lyrics are really awful. Punk started in your boutique and then worked its mm. way outwards. It was mm -hmm. the fashion came before the music. Yeah, well, um, yes, I, 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 I think that's, well, I know that that's true. It's true, yeah. And it all coincided with, you know, Johnny Rotten and, every, you know, they, they really believed in it all at that time. <clears throat> I had a big respect for Johnny Rotten then. I stopped caring about punk because I didn't think people were thinking. Instead of keep banging your head against the establishment, you, you, you have to go faster. You can't just, you know, keep on, you know, kicking and spitting and saying, you know, good. It looked great and it still does look great. And I know that my son, Joe, has really got quite a nostalgia for it. It really meant something to him. And he thinks that it did mean a lot to people and it actually changed their lives. You know, they thought, yeah, I can start a magazine like Terry John's, you know, or, you know, they, they really did, I can do something. For Vivian, that doing something meant throwing herself into the world of high fashion, making her catwalk debut with the Third World-inspired pirate collection in 1981. When the Sex Pistols finished, and it was still seditionaries, I didn't know whether to close the shop because the, the lease had stopped and Malcolm was doing music and I just thought, 
uh, I didn't want to do it. And do you know what? I decided to carry on for the reason that I was good at it. And I thought it was my duty to carry on and keep on doing it. It was World's End still. And I said to him, well, you're right, Malcolm, either I've got to help you in the music business because the sex business has just gone, or we work together in the fashion business. We can't do both. Fashion every time, he said. He said, you've got to be the front of this fashion business. And he said, what you need to do is you need to do a catwalk show and it should be under your own name. It should be under Vivian Westwood. So um, I did. And I thought, I'll do what other designers do. I started looking at history, French Revolution, you know, all those merveilleurs and these incroyables from the French Revolution. So he was the idea of let's plunder the world. That's how, how the clothes became the pirate idea that we would get our ideas from history and from the third world, mm. yeah. And um, of course, we put that merveilleur's dress in, in, in the first pirate show. Throughout the decade, Vivian's early notoriety quickly gave way to both critical and commercial success, and her collections, be it Hypnos or Clint Eastwood, Minnie Crinny or Harris Tweed, became imitated the world over. Did you know when things were going to be successful? I think you have to have that sixth sense, sense of what's going to sell. You know, when you do that little corset and it just gives this tickle to that nobody's seen since 1800. You know, I mean, you, 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 uh, you just know you're onto something. You know, Sadie Frost, she was the first person to wear that on the catwalk and the photographers just died. Come back, baby. <laughs> they were, their eyes were crossed, they were just couldn't believe it, yeah. Mm. Today, Vivian Westwood occupies a singular space in British fashion, both much loved, yet still provocatively outspoken. For your Autumn Winter 16 show, you had an idea and it was culture, not consumption. Mm -hmm. What did you mean by that? The 20th century was a mistake. It preached the idea of smashing the past. We call it iconoclasm. It's like telling a scientist to throw away his laboratory. You throw away all your technique, you throw away all the skills, you throw away all the people in the past who've been geniuses. You don't want to know about them because everything comes from you. We don't have any artists today. You know, they, they don't have any vision whatsoever. And that's why they're not artists. They're just in it for the money, kind of. And, talking about themselves is is if they if they do reflect the times then it just shows how awful it is and it's about ug ugliness if they are trying to do anything but the idea that everybody can can be an artist is just mad the only people who have any culture are the ones who don't throw away the past with husband Andreas Kronteller taking a more prominent role in the design of the brand, Vivian spends an increasing amount of time championing the political issues that have come to define her work. We've got to build a movement. It's called Intellectuals Unite. I started this with the idea that we've got to link all the NGOs, link everybody who doesn't agree with the government. It's the only way we'll save ourselves. The great thing about intellectuals, though, is that it is inclusive. And that means that I just say, anybody who's on a march, who wants to know what's going on in the world and their place in it is an intellectual. Even if it's a kid who's just joined the march, he's had no education, he's been plain truant and he's only 14 years old or something or 12 or whatever, he's on that march, he's an intellectual. And I, I would say that David Cameron is not an intellectual. Propaganda is very, very powerful. And even today, you know, you get loads of people saying that David Cameron's the best to, to run the country financially. My God, if you want to dig a hole and put your money in it, vote for David Cameron. You know, I mean, it's mad. I'd love to ask how you feel about that word icon and how you feel about being described as one. Well, I'm not interested. I mean, 10, <laughs> ten years after I'm dead, Nobody will even remember you. It doesn't matter, you know, I don't care. You know, hopefully, you never know, I'm, this business might still be going, but, well, it will be with Andreas. He'll remember me and make sure that it's Vivian and Andreas somehow working together. But, um, but 
no, no, I just want to save the world and get a life, you know. I mean, but, and that is one of my slogans, which is to do with literally, let, let's let the next generation get a life. Well, Vivian, I think people will remember you regardless. Okay. But thank okay. you very much. <laughs>I always think of our clothes as being sensual and modern, but when you start showing the body, well then you can have some fun.